Yeah. That was rude. Yeah. How dare you? I'm trying to have a nice meal here. Welcome everyone always <laughs> open. We got you. <laughs> we, you got got. Uh, this is season finale of Always Open. Yes. Well, you know, we're taking a break. People don't call them seasons always. We do because we are weird. Uh, and we like to categorize everything because we're anal. So welcome everyone. Uh, it's gonna be a little break before we're back for the next season, but hopefully we'll have a good time today. I'm your host, Barbara Dunkelman, and with me today, I got some friends. I'm Ashley. I got, look, I got distracted because she started talking about anal. Oh. oh. <laughs> you say anal and she just. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm anal. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I'm James. James Willems. Hello. Hi. And it's me. I don't know anything about anal. <laughs> My name's Mary Ellen. You don't know anything about anal yet. Yes. yes. That's the clarifier. Because exactly. anything I'll learn today. We're not doing a topic on anal, but we are doing <laughs> topics. See that segue? There you go. On, uh, we're doing cupidity. We're taking a call from our hotline. We're doing a question about our pet peeves and, time permitting, a question about what we can't live without and then we're doing one of our new segments at the end of the show called Beer Me Out, where one of our guests will have to chug a beer and explain something they're passionate about all within one minute. So Thank I'm looking you. forward to it. James, welcome! Hi! Yay. You made it! I'm really, I'm genuinely happy to be here. Thank you for having did me. You, did you think we just weren't ever going to invite you on? Yes. Because you are, you're not the final member of Funhouse, no. but... It's pretty close. It's basically me and then Benson. Yeah, which we'll I'm genuinely week. surprised at Benson. Well, we invited <laughs> Benson, but it turns out he no had a list. schedule conflict. He's yeah. on the no fly list. <laughs> yeah, yes. Family in Afghanistan. <laughs> it's not. I mean, they're oh, fine. It's just, but you know, it's the climate. Yeah. It's the cl yeah. political climate. I get it. You know? I feel like people always could tell if it's a season finale if we have a member of Funhouse on. It's our Funhouse yeah. finale. I it's feel like the bar is pretty high, though. It is. Because you said season finale, which is a big deal. Yeah. Uh -huh. that is a big deal. And it's Funhouse person, and they're always very popular because we're very funny people. Yeah, you are. So now it's I have to try name. and be funny. Yeah. And honest. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Not an easy combo. But no. somehow we do it every week. <laughs> and Jokes are there and lies. <laughs> you need to gape wide open. I mm. thought we weren't doing anal. Mm. We're on different I hole. Said we, we said we weren't talking about it. We're still doing it. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Got it. We're actually giving yeah. you a piercing <laughs> oh. oh, God. Oh, wait. Speaking of that. Can oh. I, so, um, last week we talked about piercings and whatnot, and fucking Texas sent me a literal, like, barbell piercing through someone's penis. Which part of the penis? The head. Literally the oh, part really? you think there should be no yeah. piercing in? I once saw the most, um, it was a uh, whole dick tattooed up like a dragon with a piercing through is the eyes. That's cool. It was dope. I would like, I would love to meet that dick and just like shake it. <laughs> I'm sure it would like that too. Like, you know, well, it doesn't have a hand. <laughs> shake it once, it's fine. Shake it yeah, twice. Exactly. Okay. You're playing with it. Yeah. Uh, so he sent little. me that picture and I forgot about it. Um, f fast forward to Sunday, I'm sitting having a lovely dinner with oh, my mom who is No! <gasps> and I get a text from Texas and it comes up on my phone and it's asking a few questions about work and so I'm like, oh, I'm gonna pull it up. I mean, it comes up on my watch. I was like, oh, I'm gonna pull it up on my phone. Pick up my phone, open the text message, and there's a fucking gigantic penis sitting next to my mom. Oh my god! And I was Did like, you see ah, it? Ah, ah, You'd be like, mom, She's, mom, what's this? She's like, that's your father. It was. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I just started rapid fire texting him, so it, like the text would move the picture up. Yeah. And I was just like, my mom almost saw that. She didn't see it. Thank God. Are you sure? Well, maybe she don't, like, cool. don't underestimate your mother. Mm -hmm. She might have seen it. She didn't like, say anything. She I mean, you know, cool. it's a, it's all, it's a skill of being able to be like, that's true. But yeah. Not, but also not. she's like, she can't see that well. I don't think she had her glasses on at the time. She might have also, if she just glanced at it, might not even yeah. been able to tell what it was, yeah. even though she was, it was, she was very, very interesting. Yeah, those piercings in make dicks really unrecognizable. They sure do. <laughs> Let's make all of us unrecognizable. <laughs> oh boy. And do oh, yeah. a shot. Yeah. Drink till they all look like dragons. Exactly. Yep. This is a, a, we're just doing a lemon drop that Texas made for us oh, to cute. celebrate the finale. This is one of our favorite shots. So yeah. cheers. Thanks cheers. for being here, James. And, and Ashley, for welcome me. back. Cheers. Yes, cheers. thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Oh, we gotta do the touch thing. Candy. Oh, fuck. Forgot Ashley's here. Oh, yeah. If it spills, you're a bitch. Mine spilled. I'm sorry. Mine spilled a little bit. Or maybe it's just the condensation. condensation. Dribbled a little. And dribbled. Besides, it's got a sugar room. So. It does. That was mm. mostly lemon. Delicious. More lemon than drop. <clears throat> Should be equal Delicious. parts. Yeah. What does a drop taste like? Uh, you know when you open your mouth as you're falling out of a plane? Mmm. 
So like dry. Vodka. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like vodka. Are you done that before? A little, little bit like skydiving? vomit? No, I want to go skydiving though. Really? I, I would genuinely do that. Have yeah. you been? Yeah, I went once. Oh, it was though so I was uh, it was when I lived in Australia and I was working for Xbox and uh, Just Cause was coming out. I think it was Just Cause Two. Mm -hmm. And so the publisher invited a bunch of people and they were like, Would you like to come along? And I was like, Yes. So that way if someone's like, like in the future the is like, why did you go skydiving? And you're like, just cause. That's just cause. Yeah. Uh, and you're like, wow, so brazen. It was amazing. <laughs> it was really fun though, except I was like all into it and then I got to the part where you have to jump out and somehow my hands just like held on to the door. Oh, and they were like, let like, go and I was like, I'd really like to. I would. <laughs> Not re it's not responding. Was the and they air had, not ripping They had to like out? push me out. But they, oh. you were attached to someone, right? Yeah. 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 I was attached to someone, and he just had to like pry my fingers off and push me out. It was that, fun. That's the part that would always time. get me the most. Okay. Being not attached always. to someone. Well, this didn't take. No, me I did. I went skydiving once, and the the thing that got me the most that I wasn't Thank expecting you. is it, when they. When you jump, all that stuff is not as scary. It's when they first open the door to the plane and you mm -hmm. stick your legs out because they literally yeah, are yeah. pulling away from you. Ugh. And then you have to like re adjust yourself to like put them down on the little bar that's mm -hmm. there. That's what scared me the most, I think, about uh, it. And I was just yeah, like, no, oh, we are really up never very high. No it's reason like to. The first three seconds when you realize that you've just left a perfectly good plane and you're now hurtling <laughs> full speed <laughs> towards the earth. With somebody. Have you seen the video? Some guy just broke or he jumped out of a plane without a parachute. Yeah, into a net, right? Into a net. Where? Like just no. on the ground? Yeah, there was a net on the ground, and then he jumped out of a plane, and then he wasn't flew it like down. some world record? Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's the first time someone jumped out of a plane without <laughs> into a, a net. What was yeah. his ethnicity? Awesome. Probably white. <laughs> white people fucking crazy. <laughs> Y'all are reckless. It was. It was. They had a plan, but even in that plan, when you watch, if you go back and watch the replay of what he hits the net, it's like he did not hit it dead center. Yeah. He was like. Towards the edge. So that's oh. the question. How do you adjust yourself so precisely? Because you're you, jumping. You straighten. That's yeah. it. And then you straighten. And then if someone like on a walk, you, you mean, like wide. left, left, yeah. left. Too much left. Too much left. I guess so. I mean, I guess you're just like looking at it and going for it. Man, that's like too much to focus on. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's get things started <laughs> before I get any more fear of heights as we talk about this. Uh, we're gonna play cupidity. James, this is gonna be your first time playing. Ashley, you've played before. I have indeed. Uh, this is where we take questions from OkCupid okay and rapid fire them to each of our guests one at a time. Elise is great at this game. Is she? So no pressure. That's because she has that, an OkCupid okay profile. I mean, she's terrible at she's this terrible. game. She's terrible. She dates one. a lot. She does. She gets around. She's just very eager to answer all the questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is nice. It's nice to have enthusiasm. Ashley, you ready? Okay. Yes. <laughs> all right. And go. Is it easy for you to apologize when you know you have made a mistake? No. Would you rather give a nice gift or receive one? Give one. Where would you prefer to live? A modest house in a nice neighborhood or the nicest house in a modest neighborhood? Super dope house in, a, in an okay neighborhood. Do you generally smile at little kids who cross your path? Yes. Have you ever intentionally failed at a task you knew you could do well just so you would never be asked to do it again? Yes, repairing PCs for my parents. <laughs> <laughs> I would avoid that too. I'm like, oh, I just don't know what there's so, like. I'm like, I don't know. I don't really get this. And then they stopped asking and it worked. Great. Nice Except job. then I had to see all of the toolbars they had installed on their browsers. Oh. And that hurts. It hurts real bad. My grandfather used to do this really cute thing. Um, my grandparents aren't very tech savvy, as most people's grandparents are. My parents came over one day to help them with their computer. And my dad was like, oh, why don't you pull up a browser and like show me what the problem is? And so my grandfather pulls it up and then he pulls out a magnifying glass. Oh. And he's just like reading on the computer with that. And he my dad's like, you more. know you could just <laughs> he'd been using a magnifying glass That's pretty the whole cute. time. It's just endearing. That's cute. Mm -hmm. I like it. What's the best gift you've ever given? I was gonna ask, yeah. You're a good gift giver. Um, I can be a good gift giver. Uh, I can tell you well, I mean, the, what I'm getting for Bernie for our anniversary is a good one. Which is when? You can tell us. You won't. It's you won't on the 23rd. He won't find out. Of this month. We, okay. We'll have been together for six years. I'm getting him a new kitten. Oh. Really? It's been almost a year Does since Does he know? Joe. Because we're going to have to cut that out. <laughs> I told him because okay. I didn't okay. feel like it's something I could give That's him a without a discussion. Yeah. yeah. That's true. But I was like, I, I, think feel like, I feel like it's time we're ready for a new little kitten, so start thinking about names. Are you, do you guys have one picked out yet, or? No, not yet, but okay. we think it's gonna be another orange cat, because Bernie's convinced orange cats are the best cats in the world. They're great. I don't have cats, I've never had cats, but I've always liked orange cats. Joe's just special. 
Joe's a, Joe is a good cat. I'm, I miss Joe. He's a good boy. <laughs> I'm going to drink till I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, James, are you right, ready? I'm ready. It is your turn. Okay. And go. Do you cry more than twice a year? No. <laughs> Would you rather have complete mastery of one skill or be good at many? Good at many. All else the same, would you rather date someone rich or hot? Hot. Do you have all your teeth? Yes. <laughs> when you get home, do you usually want to tell someone about your day? No. Do you make impulse purchases a lot like gadgets you don't need or clothes that are too expensive? No. You don't. Oh, he finished all the questions. Oh. That's the first time I've ever had time. Uh, 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 would you rather have a thoughtful and a personal gift or cash gift of choice of value? Uh, cash gift. Choice. Yeah. Twice value. So I cannot spend it on something tech savvy or expensive. So before we get into your answers, I just want to point out that one of the questions from OkCupid was, do you have all your teeth? Yeah, can you talk <laughs> about that for a second? Yeah. Does that include wisdom teeth? Oh, oh, does that include wisdom teeth? No, it's, I, I say no. It says, well, okay, then it doesn't. Then yes. I haven't lost any teeth. Okay. That I, I haven't chosen to lose. Yeah, <laughs> I would think it would be a question of like your... Like, do you have all your teeth? As in, like, do you have a full set of teeth? I actually I have, have all my three teeth. wisdom teeth. Have you ever considered getting a really sweet grill? No. Mm. That should be a question <laughs> for OK Cupid. Yeah. Would you <laughs> Would you want a grill? Yes would you or no? Consider getting. Are grills still a thing? What if it was like a Swarovski so. grill? Oh, like expensive? How much is it worth? I have no idea. Is it permanent? No. Are, are well. Swarovski crystals like? Not glass. I don't know much about them. I just assume that they're I pretty little glass. Don't know much about anything. I had. <laughs> I had a microphone that was surrounded in Swarovski crystals. It was like a rock band microphone, or it's for one of the nice. Yeah, I just want to put out you're going like this, it, and it would like like you could like bring it to your. <laughs> it's like when you want to sing solos or. <laughs> no, uh, I do remember uh, it was a thing for a while. Girls getting uh, like little. Swarovski things for like their butt cracks, so yeah. they would intentionally wear like the low rider jeans, yep. but then like have like sparkly butt cracks. Yeah. There'd also be a you could get vajazzled. Yeah, wait. how does that work? I think it's just glue. Do you, Texas, wait, is you it know? like a full, is a vajazzle a full Come frontal here. shave what, and then you replace what do you, let's your penis with, with what, crystals? Texas How, what's now? a vajazzle? Do you, would you just do what you'd normally do with pubic hair with a vajazzle? Or what do you is, get down until What's like, a vajazzle? So vajazzle, Nitty -gritty. my friend who owns a uh, Brazilian waxing spa here in Austin, they did vajazzling for a long time. And what it is is they, uh, obviously they would wax the area so it's free of any hair. Mm -hmm. um, and then they would actually put on little crystals of whatever they want. Um, you could do Swarovski or you could do the little just gems. Like and they right on the skin? Mm -hmm, right on the skin. And so what it's is like it? But like the outer skin? Crystal pubes. No, it would, it, any, any, anywhere. Show me where. The any, Mons pubes. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 I love that you know what the Mons pubes the is. Pubes. Wait, so, oh, I is, know the you, So this is the area well. here. <laughs> you could go above the area or you could go on the side of the area. It was a heart. Like get one of the glitters. Probably not. That sounds, it, so it's a that it's like actually a thing. surgical glue, like like it's the same kind of almost the same glue they use for eyelash extensions. It lasts six yeah. to eight weeks. You said surgical. This could last. You said oh. clit, uh -huh. and I just for some reason thought of someone getting their clit pierced, and it made my whole body. Tons of people get their clit. People do it. Yeah, I can send you a picture. Oh, I can no, Google please it. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> you can send it directly. Make sure her mom's next to her mom. Yeah. I'm gonna actually get your mom on a group chat oh, and yeah. just be like, so, just start sending all of our Here stuff. So, yeah, yeah, you can vajazzle. Yeah, you can vajazzle anything you want. So I think that it was probably about you can vajazzle anything you want. Three or yeah, well, you, you can know, vajazzle your forehead, but buttholes. I, you know, ba I <laughs> went to Disneyland one time and I wanted to get a uh, full Darth Maul face paint, but they wouldn't do it because I was an adult, and I guess they don't do full <laughs> face paints on adults. Maybe because yeah. they. You need to identify, like, because you could be up to uh, no good or something. Uh, or maybe How does Disneyland feel about vajazzling? vajazzling? I think it would be a win-win. <laughs> <Do you know laughs> <that answer? laughs> I don't. They know might the have a hard time yeah. identifying something on your body. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, is this the is this the vagina that robbed you? I thought you were gonna go with uh, like it would be too confusing for people because only kids have their face painted. So if they see an adult with their face painted, they're like, obviously this oh. is a child. No, we were we were talking about this on the podcast the other day. How uh, at, <laughs> just a really tall two year old at Chuck E. Cheese, that uh, like when you come in with a kid, the parent and the kid right. both get a stamp, like an invisible ink stamp, yeah, and they have to match when they leave because some. You never know if like an older person is trying oh, wow. to bring a kid out with that, them. I went to Turkey Cheese all the time. No one stamped me. So you could You're get matching vajazzling. So you and Elise could get mas thinking. matching vajazzles. Yeah. And so that, so we that when you go to Turkey Cheese, they know. Excuse me. Can I know. see 
you're, you're good. You, you check out. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> you keep the stamp, drop trow. Yes. That you know, perfect. my first job was at a Chuck E. Cheese. Was it really? I got fired within the first day. What did you do? I got, I got the job, and then yeah. I went back to start my first day, and they were like, no, sorry, because for some reason the manager forgot that they serve beer at Chuck E. Cheese. And if you're under a certain age, you're not allowed to serve the beer. So he fired me because he realized that if I was working there, he wouldn't be able to sell any beer. Well, why could you just oh, ruin my whole summer? Wait, yeah. I, I thought that just can you? You have to. You just you couldn't right? serve the I beer. I can't right? serve the you beer. You should just like made but pizzas or something. They could, so they couldn't. If you were the only server, then they could. Okay, fine. Yeah, he just thought it was a found it to be inefficient, and he didn't want to hire me. I guess like they make everyone do every job there. I guess so. Also, you don't cry more than twice a year? Mm -hmm. Really? Do what does it take to make you cry? Maybe once a year. Let's see. The last time I cried was when I saw, there's a movie called Hachi a Dog's Tale. Oh, and it stars dog. Richard Gere. And it's garbage. The movie's <laughs> trash. It's, a, it's like an American so version of that dog in Japan that, like, whose owner died. And then the dog would go to oh. the same <gasps> spot every single day and wait for the owner. But the owner died when he was at work. Mm. And so the dog, for like another 10 years, just went to the same spot and Kind waited. of like the, the story from Futurama. Yes, exactly like that. Um, and there's this movie that Richard Gere stars in, and the movie's really garbage, except the dog at the end of the movie when he's really old and has been going to the same spot for 10 years looked exactly like the dog that I had oh. growing up. And I was, I was, I was it was funny because Elise was like, I'm going to go to the bathroom. She went to the bathroom, she came out, and I was inconsolable. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like just a complete mess and I was I felt worse because it was such a trash movie so. <laughs> She's like, You're crying. You're like, it's so bad. Yeah, I know that, I really, But that was like years ago. That's heart-wrenching. It was one of the last time I last time Animals I are so easy to cry over though. Oh god. Yeah, because they're so oh. innocent and lovely I they just cried over uh, Pictures of one of the like 9-11 search dogs who oh. retired and mm. then passed away now. I'm crying again <laughs> oh, no, Ashley, oh, I get it. Girl. It was so sad. <laughs> right, we got tissue. <laughs> Oh, I get it. Here you go. Oh, oh. Man. Did the dog <laughs> died <laughs> at? No, it just it died recently. It worked really hard, and then it retired, and when it helped kids learn to read out loud if they were scared, oh. and then it passed away a few years ago. Oh, see, because they're it's pure. They're pure. It's because they're pure. Yeah, they are pure. You never yeah. want to think of like an animal suffering or. You're gonna make me cry. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's. Just, we're okay. It's fine. You're nice try, to okay, Cupid. You won't get me. <laughs> <laughs> that would just our ploy. We we're all gonna start crying, and then if try that didn't do cry. it, we would call you a monster. Yeah, and then we'll yeah. find a dog. Like, yeah. you better fucking cry. <laughs> <Pull the Yeah. laughs> just a little noose around. Yeah. It doesn't look like a dog I've ever owned. I'm sorry. I don't care. <laughs> Kill it. Did you cry like anything to like happy cry, like with Elise getting married, anything like that? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't, I don't happy cry really. Okay. I feel happy. And I, I, the, it's, there's a separation there. I'm never like it's over never overjoyed ever. so much that I have to weep. I think I, I think I cry once a day. I laugh cry every time I'm on this show. Yeah, you do. But now you're just crying. <laughs> now you're just crying. crying. Yeah, yeah. But I'm keeping the tradition alive exactly. a little bit, okay? If people see this right now, they'll think you were just laughing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, Look, she's having a great it's time on the show. Funny. Keep drinking. <laughs> All right, Miss Merle. Ask away, Barbara. Your turn. And go. Would you prefer to have one true love forever or lots of fun and meaningful relationships? Fun and meaningful. Is it easy for you to dispose of things that you really don't use anymore? Uh, that sounds yes. like a no. Are you too lazy to go into the kitchen and make some real food? Yes. Are you intimidated by a partner who is more sexually experienced than you? Intimidated by a partner? No. Do you like kissing in public? No. No. I'm not into PDA. Not at all. You what about hand holding? About Even that. Job. Well, here's the thing: is that I butt squeezing. I that um, that's what I'm, I'm cool with. Okay. Just stick a hand right up in there. Yeah, but <laughs> maybe, like if, maybe like in the butthole. In the butthole. So it's more yeah. like you don't like to do it, or like if you see other people do it, you're like, oh. Um, I'm just uncomfortable with all sorts of public displays of affection. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, this is actually an intervention, Barbara. Yeah. You and Trevor need to stop making yeah. out. We're pretty gross. Uh, I was saying bye to him because he was just he just left for London, and I was like giving him a kiss goodbye in the hallway, and Nadia and Megan walked by, and they're like, "Ew!" <laughs> and I was like, "He's leaving." And they're like, "Yeah, for two days." And you're about to see him. I was like, "Aren't you about to leave for London?" In two days. Yeah. He's yeah. going up two days before me. 
Uh, oh, we might be on I the same him. flight. Thursday. Yeah. Ooh, brag about it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'll I'll order you a champagne and send it up to you in oh the front. Oh yeah, that's cute. You should. What? I can't do that. I was gonna say I was like, bitch, are you in the front? No. <laughs> We're taking Teddy. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it means, there, it means we have, like, no middle seat. You, you know how on a flight you can sometimes strategize and be like, mm -hmm. all right, we're going to sit here and here and leave a seat because no one wants this seat, mm -hmm. right. and maybe we'll get some extra room? Nah, mm -hmm. we got a 13-year-old to entertain instead. It's going to be real fun, it though. Makes He's it actually more a good flyer. Yeah. Plus, Kids are he's shorter than I am, so I can take his leg room like this. Oh, yeah, dude. No, the best is, is when there's no one in the middle. Is he going to sit in the middle, middle seat? Oh, hell yeah. yeah. I'm not sitting in the middle seat. Not if I don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. Not if you don't have to. All right. You ready? Are you ready? Always. He dibbed. And go. Do you own anything lucky? A charm, religious symbol, an item of clothing, or a keepsake that you think helps things turn out your way? Yes. Do you like to listen to music while you have sex? No, actually, I don't. How many people would describe you as one of their best friends and really mean it? I don't know if any. Barb! If you had to pick one of the following locations for a first date, which would be the most appealing? An amusement park, a restaurant, bar, or a park? A uh, park. What's the most exhausting or annoying part about dating? Ugh, having to get to know someone. <laughs> <laughs> I say that now. That, that's like <laughs> you're, that's like the worst. Yeah. Am I right. I say this at like the beginning, like when you have to do the first date. That's essentially an interview of like, where'd you grow up? How many brothers do you have? What do you like to do? Where do you go to school? Like. All this stuff that just seems very, I guess because I went on yes. a lot of first dates back you, to back to back. Is it that you're trying to assess that information? Like, because some of that, how many siblings you have, doesn't really matter. Yeah. It's like a conversational question. It's more of like trying to make small talk and get to know each other on, the, on a first date. I just, I don't know. I'm just not into it. it. It's been a while since I've dated. Do you ever try to intentionally trigger red flags to get that out of the way early on? Um, I ask certain questions, and I also am very observant of people's behavior and how they treat wait staff and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. If someone's rude to, like, anyone service industry-wise, I'm just like, I'm out. Have you experienced that before? Like, on a date or anything? Um, I noticed it with a guy I was dating for about two months. Uh, he would do this thing where he would be very polite to people's face, but then an asshole behind people's back, mm. including, like, service people or anybody we'd pass on the street. He'd be like, Ugh. We that guy's car. Ugh. And then he passed by and be like, hey dude, sweet car. And I'm like, he's Regina George. He is. You dated Regina George. I actually just redated her. I was going to say hot. redated her. Redated her. Mm -hmm. uh, mean Girls the movie. She was a bitch. So I also don't know. But if with a redemption arc. That's true. She does have a redemption. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. It's because she gained that weight. So she had to. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Calteen bars. Calteen bars. Um, yeah, I don't think, I don't know if I'm anyone's best friend. Hey, girl. But I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think I have a, like, other than Trevor, I don't think I have a best friend. I feel like um, a lot of us here tend to have, like, a like a best friend, like, ring. Yeah. yeah. Where it's like, this is my crew. Yeah. My, like my I, homies. I have people who I would say, like, are my best friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 But yeah. I don't you don't know. have to have just one. Yeah. I grew up next door to a kid who was my age who I would describe as my best friend. Yeah, but as a but kid. But again, I like, I only have a, con I, I only talk to him once every couple weeks through yeah. text, maybe. We'll like try and take a vacation or something like once a year where we hang out or see each other. But like, I would say he's my best friend, but I interact with him way less than people are in my life all the That's time. True, true. very yeah. true. Well, I, I mean, honestly, like I'd say I'd consider like Bernie as my best friend. Yeah. Like if, like you know, life buddy, best friend. I think, I feel like it's way. someone who like plays a really important role in your life, but also you could tell anything to and like they know everything about you, you know everything about them. So I think a lot of people's significant other tends to be that. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know a lot of people these days who do have a best friend. I mean, mine is similar to James. Like, my, uh, the person I consider my best friend is the girl I grew up next to. And I, I talk to her way less than I do, like, my friends in my daily yeah. life. But if you had to think back, like, oh, my childhood best friend. Yeah, my yeah. childhood best friend. They earned it. They yeah. put in the time. She's been there. Yeah. Well, I wish I was up. less shitty about keeping up with people from, like, a distance. Yeah, I'm really bad at that. I'm oh, bad at keeping up with people here. With, with your friend, because mm -hmm. it's pretty mutual, I feel like, with my friend, where Elise will sometimes say to me, oh, you should text him. And yeah. I'm like, I don't think he wants me to. Mm. He's got his life, yeah. and I've kind of got my life. And when we hang out, it's like we've been hanging out the whole time. Yeah. But when we're not, it's not like we're pining for each other. Right. 
So is that, is yeah, that, oh yeah, it's like a similar. friendship that will always exist. Yeah. And it's like, it's good when you're together, but it's not one of those things that requires maintenance. Yeah. Like, I haven't, I only, we only ever see each other really if we both like happen to be back home at the same time because yeah. she lives in a different place now. She never comes to us and I never go and see her. It's only when you're home. But, yeah. Well, you know what else? Uh, I, ha I don't have a best friend, but I do have a best mattress. Ooh. <laughs> <how's that? laughs> nice job. And it's, uh, it's my Casper mattress. It's the best one. Uh, th this episode of Always Open is brought to you by Casper, a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products to create an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience one night at a time. Get $50 off select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash open and use the promo code open at checkout. Casper is a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products to create an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience one night at a time. Casper's mattresses are designed by humans for humans. My favorite line ever of any ad copy um, to ever exist. Uh, the original Casper mattresses combines multiple supportive memory foams for a quality sleep surface with just the right sink and just the right bounce. Casper's breathable design helps you sleep cool and regulate your body temperature through the night. Um, James, I think, also loves Casper, as you can see by his <laughs> facial expression, as does Ashley. Uh, but no, I, I really love coming home from a long trip and sleeping in my Casper bed. Or also, like, sometimes I sleep at Trevor's place. He doesn't have one yet. But every time one. every time I can, I'm like, hey, why don't we sleep in my place tonight? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can feel the difference. Bed. Are you a side sleeper or a back sleeper? I'm a side sleeper. Side sleeper, Hugh. Me too. Side sleeper. Side sleeper. Trevor's a, a, a front sleeper. I'm, what? I'm what? like a I'm like a front three quarters. He sleeps so, on his front. That is a myth. He has his arm up like this. We'll get what into that weirdo. Penis? Finish that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, if you like sleeping any direction, you could get fifty dollars towards select mattresses by visiting Casper.com/open and using the promo code open at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. That's fifty dollars towards select mattresses by money. visiting Casper.com/open and using the promo code open at checkout. And yes, it is a lot of money. He sleeps on his stomach. On his stomach, yeah. Is he a serial killer? What? How dare yeah. you? I'm with I'm with Mariel. <laughs> no, nope, he's a serial killer. <laughs> well, would you it consider just look like face down? Like he puts his head to the side still. That even seems worse. No. With like a crooked, <laughs> twisted this so way the whole time. Here's how you sleep comfy on your stomach. It's more of like a three quarters thing. Is like you're sort of like side and then tilt a little bit down. One leg goes out and up, so you can get like some nice breeze. And then you have like breeze. one arm out, and you have to use a really thin pillow so that your head's not like all whomped up. It has to be like nice thin. <laughs> or go on the edge of the pillow so your face is still kind of tilted down. Do so you have a whole method? Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say. Oh, I thought you, oh, you, were, yeah. I thought you were a side sleeper. sleeper. I mean, I consider liar. I consider, <laughs> I consider, well, I consider like front sleeping to be full on like this sleep, like just like face like down. Like, would you? Yeah, well, that's how you got to cushion them, right? I, I just can't. I if just I, can't sleep on yeah, my stomach. Yeah, if I try and sleep on my stomach, I'm I'm like my body is like three inches off the bed. I like lying on my stomach when I feel nauseous. That's like the only time because I don't know why, but lying on my stomach puts pressure on it. I mean, that's a fetal time. Oh, fetal time. Yeah, just straight up like curl up and go. <laughs> yep. You ever have Blech. you ever have to fart really bad, and so you do child's pose? Okay. <laughs> and then it's like. I want to bring this like, fucking like thing. Someone up. opened up a fire hose. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking try. I had to. I had the worst gas pains the other day, and I watched a video where Bruce was talking about how if he does this pose, it's yeah. like on all fours. Yeah. Where he like arches his back and does this weird you thing. Did that, yeah, yeah. I did it for like ten minutes and nothing happened. And then I tried lying on one of my sides, which people say like helps promote farting and gas really. Okay. Yeah. And nothing was happening. Five minutes later, it was like. It's like a wind tunnel yeah. open. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if like all those things combined in one just like released. It's, it's wild. It was amazing. It's wild. <laughs> well, <laughs> let him, I mean, you gotta like relax a little bit, and, like unclench, right? Uh, yeah, maybe. I, I mean, don't just... buttholes generally exist in like a constant state of clench? They're trying to keep something in there or out of there at all times. Yeah. Hmm. A constant state you of clench. You raise an excellent point. <laughs> 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 all right, well, next up, we're going to uh, grab a, a message from our hotline which we have people call in, ask their questions, and then we talk about and give our advice. Sounds hot. Switching it up. Oh, hot. My name is Stephanie. I am 22 years old. I am graduating from college in December, and I have a basic idea of what I want to do, um, but I have lived in the same town for my entire life, and the idea of facing oncoming adulthood is kind of scary. So I was wondering if you had any advice for a young adult type person who is going out into the world and is completely petrified. <laughs> Thanks. 
mood. <laughs> right. So she's what, 22? 22. 22. Graduating. Stephanie. It never ends, Stephanie. <laughs> the fear never goes away. Yeah. Well, you guys, are you guys from smaller towns? Mm. Utah. Utah. Yeah, I mean, I grew up in like a farming area. Mm -hmm. And where are you from? Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay. Which, I mean, is North Carolina, but it's the biggest city biggest in North city. Carolina. But still, like, you moved to a new place. How to yeah. redo Yeah. I, I grew up in like pure suburbanism, like middle class, middle America suburbanism. Unlike a cul-de-sac or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then I moved to Los Angeles. So it was a pretty big change. How old were you when you did that? 22. Yeah. Oh, so you went to college. Yeah. I went to college in a smaller town than I actually grew up in, and then I moved from there to Los Angeles. So the transition from that to Los Angeles, did you know anybody when you were moving? Like, what would, yeah. what would you say would be some, some things that helped you out? Um, I mean, I think if you have that inkling, you should do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, if, you, if you think, like, maybe I want to try something, you should, because it's, I feel like it's always easier to go home yeah. than it is to break out of being at home. Um, if I want, if I decided tomorrow, I was like, eh, I want to go home. It would be way easier to move away from Los Angeles than it yeah. would be to get there in the first place. Um, so I think just kind of trusting that instinct in your head that says, I want to try something different yeah. is the well, best thing sure. you can possibly do. It is going to be difficult though. It's a whole new life and, and especially leaving college because college is like practice for adulthood, but then it's someone just rips off all of the safety wheels and everything and then now you're on your own. And if you don't pay your bills on time, <laughs> it's like you don't have a place to live, yeah. you know? And so that that's a big situation. I was lucky enough that when I moved to Los Angeles, it was with a bunch of people that I knew yeah. um, because it was like part of a college program and is a transitional thing. So there was like a group of us that none of us knew how to live. And so we kind of worked it out. I imagine together. that's something that would help too. Being 22, you're in an age range where pretty much everyone is leaving college and moving out on their own and starting a fresh life. So you're bound, whatever city she goes to, mm -hmm. or if she's moving out of her parents' house. I think she said. I think she's she's just like I've been in the same town for right. forever. You know what 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 do you think I should yeah. do? Which mm -hmm. is like maybe think about moving. Yeah, you know? yeah. getting out of there. For yeah, sure. like if you want to do it, do it. And you'll find people who I think are in the same boat, who are moving away from whatever town they were in or starting a new life or trying to develop themselves professionally or whatever it is. So it's like that perfect age of making new friends. <laughs> well, yeah, and if you're gonna try and do that when you're 32, it's gonna be way harder. Yeah. Because yeah. you're gonna have this whole established life. It's like trees putting down roots, basically. Like, the deeper the roots, the harder it is to move. Yeah. As opposed to young trees, which are all popping all over the place, you know, like that's what trees do. <laughs> a lot of no, trees. but I think I think this is the perfect time. Like you said, everyone else is going to be in a similar situation. Yeah, they're going to be entering this new phase of their life. Where the older you get, you don't, you have no idea. Yeah, you know, and it's cool too if you like. Let's say you move to a new city. One of the most cost-effective things you can do is get roommates. Mm -hmm. So, bam instant people to talk to. You're not completely alone. Yeah. Maybe your roommates suck, and you go and get new ones. Whatever, but you have at least like starter people to not be isolated entirely by yourself in a, a, a new city, a new place. Cause that's very intimidating. Yeah. It, if you like move somewhere and you're like, now I live by myself and I'm and an I island don't know and I don't know how to meet people and <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to do. Right. It is actually kind of nice if you like just have a room with roommates and you at least have a starter social circle and they can be like, oh, introduce you to their friends or at the very least like hey let's go grab a drink and then you start to build a social circle because yeah. that's for me that was one of the most difficult things when I moved was I didn't know how to start making friends that's yeah. the hardest part for sure so I like it and I haven't roomed with people often but when I did it was actually very helpful for starting to establish some sort of social bonds which is always really important in a new place because otherwise you feel very adrift yeah um, I, I would also say that don't be intimidated because really no one knows what the fuck they're doing. Oh God. Especially at that age. Like being intimidated by leaving whatever city you are in or starting something new or going into a job or whatever it is. Everyone's kind of in that same boat of still figuring out how to adult. Um, that it's, it's not as scary as you think it might be. Um, but also like for me when I moved here, I was I had the luxury of knowing people at Rooster Teeth right. before I got here. So like I already had like an established group of friends. But then I started thinking, what if I was new? Like how would I go about making friends in my adult life? And some things are like exercise classes yeah. or any type of 
class or, or group that you could find, book clubs, um, things that are just kind of open to new members that you could join, because it's hard when you're after school and you don't have like those school clubs to fall back on. Yeah, yeah. and it, bars are tough because a lot of people are already there with a group of friends right. and... Yeah, and you can be like, hey, you guys want to be friends? Hey, you need, <laughs> you need a new friend? <laughs> Although now there's, um, I know some dating apps have BFF stuff, Bumble yeah, BFF Bumble is BFF. something that exists, which I checked out so recently. You're just looking for a friend? It's just basically like people who want to be friends. So the dating or the dating profile on Bumble versus Bumble BFF, like the girls one would be like, love mimosas, looking for brunch dates, like uh, love to go shopping or whatever it is. Anal. Whereas, <laughs> <laughs> just for friends though, platonic yeah. anal. Just, just yeah. letting you know. Just looking for a friendly pagan. <laughs> Got it. Nothing else. Hey, that's okay. Sometimes people are into that. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. Oh, you, Meryl. You started things off anew at 22. Uh, I never left Austin. I, and I still I think about now, like, I don't want to leave Austin anytime soon, but I would like to leave Austin because I um, have spent, like, a good amount of time here. Like, I've been here for eight years now. Um, so it's kind of one of those things where I'm like, you know, like, I'm perfectly fine here. I don't want to leave, but... Where do you think you'd go? Chicago. Yeah. I want to be cold. You'd think that until you actually are cold. Well, I'm from I'm from a part of Texas where we actually experience seasons, and like I've been snowed in before, and I've been like couldn't get to out of my house for like days. What part of Texas is this? <laughs> oh, West Texas. West comma? No, just West, West area. West area. West area. Okay. Panhandle. Mm. You get tornadoes. You get all sorts of things. Sounds like a dream. Yeah. Sounds like a different state. <laughs> I know. No, it really does feel like it. But, um, like, huh? but I mean, I I did have I did reach a point where when I graduated college was kind of like I didn't know what to do with myself, and my lease was up in Austin, so I couldn't stay here because I w I didn't have a job, so I was just like I'm not gonna get a lease that I can't afford. Um, so I like moved back home. We can't all afford a lease. Hey, 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 I get it. I get it. I thought she was the pun one. I thought she was the pun one. That's what happens when you're on this side of the couch. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> um, but it just got to a point where, like, I, I've told this story before, but I, I went home and my dad was like, "You have, you have two weeks. Like, oh my god, do what you, you know." He, and he loaded his gun. <laughs> <laughs> Held up your dog. Yeah. But it, it wasn't like uh, we're kicking you out in two weeks. It was like in two weeks because he, he, I'm from a town of like. 20,000 people, there's nothing, like, I could not, I would get a job at the local paper, which would be, like, fine, but it, it's not what I wanted to do. Yeah. So he was just kind of like, you have two weeks to, like, be at home, enjoy, like, not having a job or doing anything, and then, like, we're going to push you to wherever you want to go and help you out and get you established. Uh, but luckily, I mean, I got a call from Patrick that was w one week in, and he was like, come work for us, and I was like, all right. Okay. So <sighs> never left. They still, yeah, they still I think I can me. make that work. <laughs> so what would you be your advice for Stephanie? Um, figure out what you, like, it's okay to not know what you want to do, but also, like, start to, don't just live in that, like, start a, a set chances. of plan in motion. Like, yeah. if you're, if there's a city that you've, like, you're like, I've always wanted to live here. Like, you know, but now's the time. Like, there's no, especially if, I mean, if you're not, like, being weighed down by, like, a yeah. relationship or anything else. And if else, you're not, just, yeah, if you're not in the middle of trying to figure something out or you have that freedom, you're not tied down to a job yeah. or anything yet. Or if you want to stay, like you know, who knows? Maybe she does live in, like, a great city that she doesn't want to leave. That's perfectly Paris. fine, too. She's from Paris. She's from Paris. <laughs> yeah. Who uh, wants to in leave? In this small town, I think I've outgrown it. Yeah. No one wants to leave the City of Light. So if she wants to stay in Paris and, like, find a great job there, too, you know? Maybe check out a different area. Yeah. Obviously. It's not as... It's it's super daunting and, like, trying to become an adult and, like, living on your own is super daunting. And then you start doing it and you're like, it's not that bad. I can't have Sour Patch Kids for dinner. Also, and I will wake up in the morning. You know what's great? Google and Google YouTube, great. Yeah. great resources for things that you don't know how to do, like how to cook a chicken or how to do clean, how to kill a chicken. Your taxes. Fix plumbing's what? Yeah. So. You gotta kill it before you can cook it. You can't just cook a live chicken. I um, do whatever I mean, the fuck I, I want. I, guess, I, guess, I, guess, I mean, the I process would do it for you, right? Can you save time? Oh yeah. Like a lobster? murdering it? Like Stickle. the chicken's alive, chicken. but you're breading it? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> hey, what the fuck? <laughs> well, I got time. I'm an adult. <laughs> so. All right. Well, good luck, Stephanie. You got this. Again, it's, like it, literally no one knows. It that. sounds like she has the inkling. Yeah. That she knows she wants to try something else. And I think if you think, if you know you want to try something else, you should at least try it. Yeah. You're young enough that you can. You know what we're going to try next? Answering this next question. What is it, Barbara? Can do. It's from Dan F. And Dan wants to know, What's your biggest pet peeve? Um, I noticed this this past weekend, uh, and it's something that I've caught my girlfriend doing, but it wasn't until uh, someone else 
did it in front of me that I was like, this is so fucking annoying, why are you doing this? And it is when people say, um, it has to do with direction. So when someone's like, oh, it's across the street. Like, we're here, it's across the street. In your minds, what does that mean? Across the street? Like, someone's so like, like you're oh, in a where's building. the hair salon? Oh, it's across the you're street. You're in a building, would... and you're on the side of the street, and it's on the other side. It would of the street. be on the other side right. of the street. Right. Oh, that is not what these people mean. <laughs> what do these, these savages people, mean? These people mean, like, across the highway. Oh, on the other no. Side of no. And on the other side of town? People. They mean it as, oh. like, a, like, it's close by. Like a yeah, stone's it's, throw? It's close by. Like a stone's throw. They substitute that for across no. the street. Here's which does not make any sense. No. It is not right. It is not okay. How far can you throw a stone? Pretty far. Across Very the street? Far. I can't. I, I cannot. <laughs> across the street? So, Actually, mine just be, <laughs> mine's about the middle of the road. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. About mid-road. It's real close. Sidewalk? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, I was, um, with a friend, and she was like, oh, we should get, we should get a pizza from this place. And I was like, oh, that's cool, where is it? And she was like, oh, it's across the street. And I was like, across the street is an ha another house. <laughs> We're in a house, across the street is another house. Where's the fucking pizza place? Because it's not across the street. Did where you is fight? it? Where was so it? Where was it? I kicked her fucking ass, yeah. You, you and then killed I went her? And, ate a fucking pizza. <laughs> and you buried her body across far, the street. How far You'll away never find it. Did it end up never. <laughs> um, it was, um, it was the major, the next major street. It was across that street. Okay, how far away was the next major street? It was probably like a mile. Oh yeah, that's definitely not, not across, across the street. Well, that's not across that's the street. That's down the street. It's down the street. A mile's 20 minute walk. Yeah, it's not close. That's not across the street. No. I would say like it's a few minutes away. That's what I would say. Yeah, it's a few minutes away. It's close by. Minutes away. Minutes away. Across the street does not equal. Listen up, don't fucking say it. We're ending it, no more. So that's your one pet peeve. I have or plenty. It's just one the one of. that's like been like the first one that came up in my mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. James? You look like a man who has many pet peeves. I do. I hate many things <laughs> and people. Um, this is just something that it's it's kind of shown up more recently, and I, I think it's in the right direction, but it's been corrupted. It's where politeness means that no action can be taken, where where two people are politely offering their situation. Do you want to drive? No, no, no. You should. I'll drive. No, I'll drive. No, I'll drive. Which? What do you? What do you want? And, and the, there's As a conversation. Result, no one's driving anywhere. And there's a conversation that takes place over the f next five minutes because the other person doesn't want to just say I'll fucking drive or you fucking drive, <laughs> something like that. Mm -hmm. It's like a politeness, but it's an over politeness it's a that polite results off. in a competition yeah. of politeness. <laughs> this it drives me crazy. This happens all the time. All the time. To me. Because I, I think it's a, a sub Is this the Canada thing? I don't know if it's the Canada <laughs> thing. Like, I assume this happens with you and Elise sometimes. Uh, not between us, but generally between her and someone her else. Someone else. <laughs> I would say, this, I, would say that I don't want to call people out, but if Adam and Elise <laughs> ever have a conversation, it's generally this. No, 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 it's, all, it's okay. No, no, I'll do it. No, 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 no. Yes. Back and forth. Yeah, back and forth, back and forth. And they're both trying to make the best case scenario for the other person mm -hmm. when all you need to do is just say, okay, we're doing this. Like, yeah. if, if I'm going to walk in a door and then someone's like, after you, I go, fine, and I slam it on them. <laughs> and we move on with our lives. Yeah. I don't go after you, and then we stand at the door for 20 minutes. Right. I think it, it's a mix between the politeness, but also someone not wanting to in inconvenience someone else. So Which them, is politeness. Yeah, I, I do this thing all the time with Trevor because I'm polite and he's also polite mm -hmm. and accommodating, and we're both trying to just, like, make the other person happy all the time. Where it's like, oh, uh, we got this thing in 20 minutes. Uh, do you want me to drive? He's like, well, I can drive unless you want to drive. I'm like, um, I mean, I can drive if you want. It's, it's like literally all it should be one pass. All the time. One pass. You go, I can drive. And he goes, well, I'm happy to drive. And you should go, OK. OK. I do that now. I've gotten better at it, but it does happen a lot. It's a back and forth. And it's constant. It's constant. So and there's no solution. Happens. And I'm sitting there watching the conversation happen going, how long? <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> The movie started, and no one's in the car. <laughs> it's insane. What does it happen to you? This happens, I think, in most relationships, is where you want to eat. Oh, dinner. God. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Is that well, I think, I mean, there's an extension the of this, too, which, is, which does happen between Elise and I, which is that she has a preference, and I don't care. Mm. I genuinely don't care. Yeah. Like, if she said burritos, I'd go, cool. And if she said pizza, I'd go, cool. And if she said sushi, I'd go, cool. But she's like, well, what do you want? I'm like, and I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. Whatever you say is what I will be happy to eat. And then she will go, well, like, I don't want to pick something you don't. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It's mm -hmm. okay. But then the reverse is not always true. So it could be 
she could say, well, what do you feel like? And I could go, you know what? Chicken bowls or like health health food or whatever. I want to get a protein shake. Yeah. And she'll go, she'll look at me like, like, well, did I agree to this? I don't know that I, I actually feel like McDonald's is what I actually want. And so that's, that's a different scenario kind yeah. of. Those are the only ones I allow myself to get caught up in. Sometimes I will lie. Okay. Just Sometimes I will, easier. I will like look in her eyes and I go, I want McDonald's just <laughs> because I want the conversation. And she'll go, great, McDonald's. We both want McDonald's. You're just sitting there contemplating. She's going. Yeah. <laughs> McDonald's. I want McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that's tough. Can you imagine being in the situation where you're two women and you both feel like Elise? So you both have a place in mind, but you're both also trying to be polite. It's a three hour conversation. Oh, How often does it turn out to be the same place? Never. <laughs> Never? <laughs> Never. Never. We have very different tastes, but it's always like, where do you want to go? And I have a place in mind, but I'm like, I know you don't like that place. So, oh, I don't know. You pick. And she's like, oh, well, where do you want to go? And it's constant for like. Just start off hours. right off the bat. Just go this place. Well, last time I did that, oh. I got fucking food poisoning. <laughs> That's because she picked it. Because <laughs> she, I let her pick. Mm. See, I have the you opposite that. problem where we'll decide, we're like, all right, we're going to In N Out. And then we'll be in the car driving to In N Out. Um, it's, you know, it's me and Bernie and the boys and we're, we've decided in and out and Bernie has this habit, which he's working on to give him some credit. He has this habit of like, we've decided on in and out. He goes, or mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. we could do Jimmy John's My dad sociopath. or, uh, or we could do mighty fine mm. or, and I'm like, you need stop, stop, we, stop. Like, we, like, we finally got to a point where like the boys never agree on where to eat anyway. So we finally just go, all right, here's where we're going. We're on our way. You can't, you can't go no. opening can't it up it. again. No. Like, this conversation needs to remain closed. You can't right. set up a rocket ship and say we're headed for the moon. And, and then it as it's you launching, go, it. Mars. No. You can't do that. That's <laughs> not say, how science or, works. Yeah. Yeah. Or. We're not set up for that. Yeah. You know, they just found some water on Mars. Yeah. Maybe we head over there. Well, that is very exciting, though. Uh, no. But just we're going to the moon. Ship to Mars. The math has been done. Yeah, is is yours it. also... Food related? Um, no, mine's actually a little bit of a flip side, just because I spend so much of my like life and discourse on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems like there's a lot going on now where if you disagree with someone on like one particular point, and it's not an important point, mm -hmm. let's say um, the, this is on my mind right now, uh, Switch's online thing is not great. N Nintendo Switch's online service is not up to par. And James over here is like, I fucking love Nintendo Switch's it's online it's perfect. thing. He's like, it's this perfect. is everything that I ever wanted it to be. Uh, and suddenly, just this one little thing, we both love video games. Mm -hmm. We both love Nintendo even. But based on this one thing, suddenly we're enemies for life. Mm. Yeah. Just the this weird thing where like um, like you can't, you don't agree on this minor point because of reasons. And like suddenly the other person is the enemy in across every topic in your entire yep. life. Even though you agree on like 99% of things, yep. suddenly they're the enemy. The devil. And, and just, I feel like, like, is this the hill you want to die on? It's, right. Or, 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 or fine, or kill me on, whatever. Like, <laughs> is this the hill of death? It's, it's, an, it's a very internet problem too, because that person that had this, con me, I just came from a forum of Nintendo online service lovers slash R, Nintendo <laughs> online service lovers, and then you pop in, and then you came from another forum or whatever, which is all people that hate Nintendo's online service. So you're all worked up, and you're like, right. I have all the evidence I need. Mm -hmm. Everyone agrees with me, and then you find this other thing, you go, well, oh, we can't be friends. Yeah, I just, I, you know, I feel like every everyone gets so worked up about all kinds of things, and. Maybe I'm just getting old, but I no longer have the energy patience to just yeah or mm -hmm. yeah or something I no motivation to just like fight over all these things. I'm like look It's pretty dope. You think it's the best thing. I think it could use some work I don't I really like care gaming, about fighting, but a lot of people just really want to fight gaming yeah. in particular I feel like feels so fight. polarizing well mind you like I associate a lot of it with games just because that's my field of work and that's yeah. my focus but it's just become a thing for online discourse in general. Sure. Like, pick your topic, people will be ready to fight you to the death over, a, not even like the general topic, but like a tiny little detail. Yeah, I, I feel like 
like you would probably know better than me, but I feel like part of it has to do with the fact that gaming is such an interactive media. Like movies you can watch and you can develop your own personal relationships with, but like video games ask you to play them and embody the characters. And by the end of it, you think that you are Spider-Man, <laughs> like, because you've been playing it for 150 hours. I wish yeah. I had that butt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's an okay butt. Dem abs. It's okay. Look, it's okay. it like, if, um, if my butt looked like that in tights, mm -hmm. I would wear a lot more tights. So if that's an okay butt, I would like an okay butt. Just like, you know, okay. what's up? All right. I wish I had a butt that could twerk. Girl, you sure could you, you could make twerk. that twerk. I'm sure. No, you could no, twerk. no. I've tried it in the past. Something is something in, in it may be in, spinal. Don't it blame your be, butt. Okay, well, okay. It could my, also be my the fact spine that... or my butt or something is not working correctly I because what instead it is. I. What is it? You're white. Oh. They're, hey, We're not good at that. Twerk. That's true. I just I don't know. It's not we'll work on it. We'll work on it. Thank you. I am too white for all dancing. Take some twerky lessons. I don't fucking. I can't fucking twerk. <laughs> no, but but we can evaluate. We, we can, just be like, all right, go. Yeah, okay. we can watch. You can put your mind to. Sure. You can watch, watch some YouTube, YouTube videos. <laughs> it's true. It's all in the. In the <laughs> Stephanie, if you're still watching, <laughs> you can learn how to twerk on YouTube. On YouTube. There you go. <laughs> I have a number of pet peeves, just like you, James. Okay. I hate everything and everyone. I don't hate. I'm, I'm just cynical points. of everything and everyone. Fight, fight, fight. So I have like different categories of things that I hate. Driving. There are so many things I hate about other drivers. Mm -hmm. I don't know what As it is. All other drivers? Pretty much all other drivers. Mm -hmm. I hate when people don't use their signal, mm -hmm. their indicator. I hate when people don't use their headlights when it's raining outside because mm -hmm. I like, can't see your ass behind me. Uh, I hate people who are texting and driving, don't fucking do that, or on their phone and not paying attention. People who are driving too slow, too fast, who weave around people in traffic, use Only the wrong lane. there was some sort of sign. Yeah. That would tell us People what who drive the speed should be. Slow in the left lane instead of using it for passing. Fucking hate that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then with air traveling, I hate people who stand by the gate in front of the gate, even though they're boarding group like eight. Oh, yeah. on no one thinks one. they're the one blocking the thing. I actually had a, an indicate like a thing recently, and Bernie was like, "Oh," where I was like, "I." There was this couple, and they were like, I, I saw their boarding passes, and they were like the last group. Yeah. They were right in front of the boarding thing. Oof. And I would just went, I guess we'll go around. <laughs> like, I walked around them, and Brittany was like, <laughs> I would have said like, that louder. I was like, they are right. They are right there. No and way. they have no, you know, no one ever, like, looks behind and goes, oh. I just, and you know what? It was, it was a dick move. No, but I, I would have done that, too. I was, like, it, it's no like one is patient and happy during air travel anyway. Yeah, exactly. Can I, can we make a perfect I'm sorry. storm? I apologize <laughs> for of, the way that I am. Of pet I'm peeves, uh -huh. because I was on a flight this morning. Uh -oh. You were? Oh God. Yeah, you were. You came boarding, here. Thank you very much. When I was boarding, two people in front of me said, after you. No, after you. Uh, and I'm no, standing between them. they had a, them. the light off. I'm standing between them, and then they both realized it wasn't even their group. <laughs> And then you went, no, after me. And then I just lit a match and set the airport on fire. LAX? LAX, yep, yeah. Yep, Check yep. the news. <laughs> I was All on right. a flight recently where, and this happened, there was a guy who had a big, I don't know how he got this bag on the, on the plane as a, as a carry-on, but it was a big bag, and he was standing right in front of where you board. And everyone had to scooch around him. And I was like, oh, maybe he's like group two or three and he's just waiting. Um, so I boarded, I was group three, I think, because I'm platinum fly a lot. Right about What's it. up, girl? Oh, wow. So I boarded, and like he was still standing there, and I was just like, oh, this guy's being an asshole. He's standing in front of everybody. He was the last person to get on the plane. <laughs> he was the last person. And I was like, dude, you were literally standing at the front of the fucking boarding gate the you whole just time. sit down. Just All right. Save your legs. Mm. Look, while we're Archie podcasting this shit, <laughs> Don't you hate when limousines start off? <laughs> My Tesla, okay. you guys. I, so, like, I signed up for pre -check. Mm -hmm. And so you get the you get the lane, and usually it's way faster. But is there a lottery system still for that? There used to be. For pre-check. But either yeah, for pre-check, where like just some people would I don't know randomly oh, get yeah. it. Oh, I think while they were trying oh. to promote it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, randomly. But like every now and again, you just get behind people who've never pre-checked before. Mm -hmm. and you're like. You don't have to take. I'm like, shoes. when is the last time you air traveled? Was it in this decade? Perhaps. Was it this century? Were they doing security at the gates? They're last taking all time their like traveled? pill bottles out. Yeah, or they're just like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. And they got like eight bottles of water, and they're like, I thought I might get dehydrated. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why they're in pre-check. I know. 
It happens. I okay. I'm am sorry. I, I'm my sorry. Last I'm being peeve. a dickhead again. No, you're not being a dickhead. <laughs> Hold on. I, I think, think I need more of this. My filter. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. It's a triple. I need. Oh, <laughs> I need less of a filter. I just. There you go. And oh, you know, yeah, yeah. I get it. Like travel sucks. Yeah. And it's you get frustrated, and it's really easy to take out the frustrations on everyone around you. Oh, yeah. I have no idea how many people I've pissed off by doing dumb shit when I'm I sure travel. It's happened. Probably a lot. And also, this theme goes with driving. And I'm probably also like. This. People in I have car. no idea what's going on. I'm just like chilling, like checking my phone while I'm waiting for something, and someone behind me is like, I guess I'll go around. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I know you have one more, but does it bother you knowing that we have the tech, like we have cars that can drive themselves? Uh -huh. Does it bother you that we don't have cars that when you go to change lanes, it just puts your signal on? Like it knows? Mm. It knows your driving habits and it should just do it, or as soon as it feels rain, it, it just turns, turns your lights, lights on. on. Oh, I think about this all the time. I know not everyone would be able to afford said car, but sure. at a certain point, but you if could it just was phase it out. A right? functionality. Seems I mean, like, the yeah. theoretically, we'll get to that point, right? I don't know. Imagine the point I, where, like, you where we'll get to where most cars are autonomous, and yeah. uh, the cars will be like they'll talk to each other and they'll coordinate. Like, shit, y'all, there was a collision shit, here um, because of. Manual but driver. So we're say, all yeah, gonna ride around. That's the problem. Um, we're all gonna do this. But then they're like, there's that one asshole who's in like his fucking like nice ass classic car that he's just sort of driving around, being yeah. like, this is so nice. And all the other autonomous cars are like, my dude, that's, we can't talk to you. We have you're invisible to us. This is causing some real problems. It's because yeah. that's that's the American problem. Mm. This is something that will happen. I think if yeah, I lie awake at night thinking worst. about the fact that we could theoretically just sit in a car and then it could take us to where we want to go, except for that one guy who's like, the Bill of Rights says I'm allowed to pour kerosene <laughs> in this four-wheel death machine and drive it on my own. It's the same guy who uh, got TSA pre-checked. Yeah, it's the same guy. It's the same <laughs> guy. That's him. Uh, but my last one is, uh, has everything to do with people being just shitty at communicating when they're making plans. Mm -hmm. I hate when people either flake out, just don't show up, or don't respond when you're trying to plan something that's very like time yeah. mm -hmm. uh, sensitive. When you just like book tickets or do whatever and you're like trying to reach them, trying to get a hold of them. I admittedly am sometimes a really shitty texter where someone will respond to something I say and then I'll see that they responded and just like put my phone down and I'll be like, I'll get to that later. And like keep working and then not remember it until two or three days after. Mm -hmm. um, so that I can't excuse, but just when you're trying to make plans and people don't communicate, it's so frustrating. Yeah. If I may, how often have I done that to you? Because I am a <laughs> terrible communicator. You, it's never been like a, a bad thing with you. I think like maybe once you didn't respond to me and I was just like, oh, she's probably busy. Like but it was two just weeks like, later, I'll be like, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, so you did want to come to my birthday party two weeks ago. <laughs> I, I did once text a, a friend of mine if they wanted to hang out and got a reply five months later. <gasps> I checked the timestamp on it. It was pretty amazing. Wow. And it was a yes. <laughs> so okay. that was the All best right. part. Happy ending. I don't think that I was available at that time, but I was really excited that they were available. I don't know if uh, this happened to any of you guys, but uh, Jessica Negri, who's a friend of ours, mm -hmm. who's been on the show before and, and we wor have case. worked with her, but she's like admittedly very bad at texting and getting back to people through email or whatever it is, because she's got a lot going on. Yes, she's pretty busy. There was one time where she sent this email and she's like, oh my God, I realized that I had a bunch of outgoing messages that never got sent out. So everyone got these emails from Jessica and Eager, like in the company uh -huh. that were like seven or eight months old of her being like, yeah, I can't wait to be on the show. Like, what time do you need me there? <laughs> or like, yeah, let's totally work on that together. Blah, 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 blah. And it's just like. Do you, do you think that she drafted 200 something <laughs> emails and then sent them all at the same time to then, because if you do that once, yeah. you're good forever. Right. Now people are like, oh, well, her email's messed up. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good investment. If you're yeah. that kind of person, you just just draft up, like save them all, star them, yeah. and then draft 200, 250 emails, send and them all one out. One day, well, so and it's also reckoning. Oh, it, that's this double-edged sword too. Do you ever um, do the email practice where you'll draft up an email, but you don't add the to field until like that shit's ready to go? Because like, oh yeah, like, I got to go back and I don't want to accidentally it. send mm. it to someone. Mm -hmm. Right, like there's all these things to figure out. And I need to make sure everything's yeah. included mm -hmm. and a ball. And so you just like don't add that, and then it just ends up sort of in your drafts, and you're like, oh, yeah. I never that. no one is following up on this. Like this is not cool. Mm -hmm. And then, like, 
way late after you got real mad, you realize that you just yeah. Just send it to yourself. I did, yeah. I did the opposite today where um, I responded too quickly to an email and uh, CC'd Gus in an email about Gus. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> was it a bad was one? It no, it wasn't. No, there was no shade to be okay. thrown at all. Okay. But um, I was sending, I meant to send it to Eric and CC Jess and Sales, but I was thinking about Gus because it was, I was like, hey, can you follow up with Gus on this? And I just sent it to Gus and then I was like, well, this is stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Gus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, I, I have like, a job still. Gus is shitty and everyone hates him. Uh, it's the worst podcast. Gus is stinky. <laughs> Gmail does a thing where they can you can recall things now, right? I don't know how. Like fa like Facebook. Yes. I heard that's a thing. I don't know how to do it. Yeah, I looked I for that setting at one point because I thought it'd be handy. Didn't find it, but I still heard it's a thing. But yeah. I think it's also dependent on the person receiving it. Yeah. Recipient. Mm. I don't think they can look at it and then you can just take it back. Oh, like, like, I, like I think they it's have like Reddit. Like, unsee you, it. Yeah, <laughs> basically, like, yeah, it's like Men in Black. They, <laughs> yeah. But I think it's like something can go, but before it's arrived at their client, you can catch it in transmission. Hmm. How Is much that how science works? Like, yeah. how's the internet go? I don't know. How long does the email take to drive there? <laughs> what is it Slowly. driving manually or does it have a Tesla? <laughs> is it using its blinkers? <laughs> is it wearing questions. underwear? Nice. Are they nice underwear? Nice job. This episode of Always Open is brought to you by MeUndies. You've heard me talk about MeUndies a million times, but why am I actually so obsessed with them and think that cars wear them too for some reason? It's as simple as this. When I wake up in the morning all groggy, I actually get excited to, my, to go to my underwear drawer and pick out which undies I want to wear for the day. I actually just got a new pair Which from, you get? Sa from sales. They are purple and they have sloths on them. Cute. What? Cute, wow. Cute, cute, cute little cute. sloths. I and didn't I get said, the sloth underwear fairy. God damn it. I, know, I had to go into sales to get them. Ooh. Noted. They're holding them they're, hostage. They're holding them hostage. They know where I'm going after They know this. how much we like them and how much we're going to take all of them for ourselves. Yep. So don't let sales steal your meandies. <laughs> you could order them by yourself, even the sloth pair or, or a bunch yep. of new, new selection that they have. Uh, they use a micro-modal fabric, which is a full three times softer than regular cotton. I couldn't believe how soft these things were. It's the exact fabric you're going to want down there. Wink, Ooh. wink, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> MeUndies just launched a brand new membership as well. You could level up your top drawer with new undies each month. Members game, gain access to exclusive prints that no one else can get. Uh, they get special membership pricing on every product MeUndies makes. And you could switch styles or skip any month you want. To get 50% off your first pair, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash open. That's MeUndies.com slash open. And I think you said uh, you wanted some MeUndies. Oh, yeah. No, I got the, like, you know, like the 90s, like, peace sign ones? Oh, yeah. 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 Like the ones were like, do, and they got the color blocks. Hell, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I got a pair on. I don't know what they are, though. It's been a few hours since I put them on. I'm wearing a MeUndies thong. Ooh. Whoa. I make those, too. I like, the, I like the panda one they do. Oh, panda yeah. ones are cute. Yeah. They do, I have a panda one and also one that's polka dots. And it's also black and white polka dots. Mm -hmm. And so I get them mixed up sometimes. You're like, oh, these are my panda undies. Black and white. Yeah. It is always fun when you're sitting there and you're like, what am I in the mood for today? Like, what am I feeling? What am I feeling? I yeah. love it. And because this is the finale, let's do our last segment. We'll go a little long. This is a question that's submitted by Anonymous. What's the one thing you can't live without? Barbara Dunkelman. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, <laughs> if it wasn't for Barbara, no one would swallow my vomit. <laughs> yes, vomit. <laughs> That's what she does. What that was. <laughs> <laughs> Oxygen. I'm pretty di addicted to my phone. I was gonna it's say, like, thing. it's gonna. I feel like this is gonna sound terrible for us, for us with this being our answer, but like. The one thing that I always check for when I leave the house or wherever I go is my phone. Yeah. Hmm. I will say, I did leave my phone, uh, what was it, yesterday. I came into work <laughs> and have this thing where I plug my phone into like my air vent. Someone just fell back. <laughs> um, I plug my phone into my air vent and... Uh, what? Came, like my... Like, what? In my car? Like the oh, AC? Oh, oh. Into your, oh, like oh air you air have air a mount. AC. Yeah, I have a mount oh, that plugs it. in. I thought you meant you like... Yeah, I was it. like, I was yeah. USB in there? Like, Ooh, that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, so I came into work and then was working, and I was like, where's my phone? I haven't seen my phone. Where is it? And my watch was like, can't connect to your phone. And I was like, where the fuck did, did I leave it at home? And I was like, it's in the air vent. Uh -huh. So I was at it without it for maybe 15 minutes and <gasps> Yeah. Really? I know. It's crazy. I mean, it wasn't that long. Yeah. I say that, and I, I did that documentary with Blaine 
uh, about a year ago called Connected where we were out without our phone for a week. And it was totally fine. Yeah. But that being said, people at work knew we were doing this documentary. So like mm -hmm. they knew not to email us. Right. They knew that we weren't going to be doing our normal jobs for that week and everything like that. So having no phone and having to do my normal job and keep a relationship going and everything like this, I feel is very difficult yeah. in 2018. So, I'm, I'm trying to think back. Like when we did Amazing Race, we couldn't take oh, yeah. like anything connected. So we couldn't take phones, couldn't take at the time, like my 3DS, I couldn't take anything that could connect to the internet. And I think, honestly, what I missed the most, like more so than, than my phone, was actually my Kindle. Mm. I read a lot. Yeah. Now it might be a toss up between my Kindle and my Switch, but still probably Kindle. Yeah. Like I just, I love having a library no matter where I'm at, no matter what I'm doing. I was reading before we started this. You were. Yeah. yeah. A little bookworm over here. Yeah, I was reading my startup. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, James? What I, less materialistic item? I was gonna say, yeah, I don't know that it, I can't think of anything material. I Could mean, you live without love? Could you live without Benson? Oh. I'm gonna have to at some point. He oh, have many don't years say left. that. I'm gonna, don't say that. I'll cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, human relationships yeah. is a big thing. Important human relationships, but I feel like that's a cheesy one. Uh, something more specific to me is like exercise. Okay. Probably. How long do um, you go before you get like antsy? Very short amount of like time. Like a day? Like or a week? Maybe like 36 hours. Oh, okay. Or something. Wow. There I mean I take days off, but I don't like them. <laughs> when you come to RTX, do you work out? I do. I, mean, I know. Look, he and Bernie were exchanging over text photos of the equipment in the hotel Bernie, gym. Bernie oh, texted I was hoping me. it'd be like like like, look it was good. My, no, it, oh, was, no, no. it was a dragon dicks. Yeah, yeah. Bernie, Bernie, yeah. I was, I was like, what do you think, my stud? Um, <laughs> Bernie texted me that there was a squat rack nice. in the hotel that we were staying at for RTX. It was RTX. like a dope squat rack. I had right? used it twice by the time he texted me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, but even just any sort of exercise, like, oh, even yes. if it's going out Bessie. hiking or yeah, something just like that. Some just some type of physical. Some sort of physical activity. I like doing, at least does yoga a lot, and I like doing that with her. I'm not as good. Um, Do you like Happy Baby? Yes, I like Happy Baby you and Corpse you, Pose. Downward Dog. <laughs> and Downward Dog is not bad. Parts um, but I think it's just it's, it clears my head. It's meditative for me. Um, I go to the gym on my lunch break. A lot of the people in our office like go out to lunch together, and I generally go to the gym because. So you it, sacrifice those human relationships. I sacrifice the human relationships. Is why I went with exercise uh -huh. because it clears my head. It gets me out of this like midday work state, mm -hmm. and then it, and then I can just think about things. And but it's not even like problem solving. Like sometimes when you're trying to go to bed and you're thinking about the problems that you have, it's never that because I feel like you're you're working at something while yeah. you're exercising anyway. But do you find it's kind of meditative like your your thoughts sort of fade into the back of your head because you're focusing on your workout and you're mm -hmm. counting your reps and all that. But in the back of your mind, is your brain like solving things and like cogitating? Is it rock tumbling mm. or is it a break for you? It's it's like solving things if you never get actual answers. Like mm. I don't think that I'm necessarily improving as a. Per I'm not like, oh, the things I thought of while I was working out like totally made my it's life. It's kind better. of like an outlet for. Yeah, it's just like mishmash. Sort stuff out. Yeah. And have you always been that way? Like, have you always used exercises? <sighs> yeah, I, yeah, I think I did. I didn't really come to a realization until probably like my early to mid twenties that I was like, oh, I need this for more than just like the exercise. Like it provides me with something else. On it's a more than level. being swole. It's more than being swole, though swoling is a very big part of it. <laughs> <laughs> I know that uh, Blaine's in Japan right now, and he managed to find a Gold's Gym or like some gym what? like near his. I was I was talking to Alana before she left, and she was like, "Yeah, we found some rock gyms and stuff. Like they their trip involved stopping gyms. in at gym. places to exercise. It's like, it's important to a lot yeah. of people. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I think." Uh, if you could show that kind of dedication and like do it while you're on vacation or you're oh, like yeah. a short trip, like every convention I go to, I always put running shoes and mm -hmm. gym clothes in my bag. I've used it zero times yeah. and I still do it thinking maybe this time I'll want to go to the gym. Yep. And well, that's the first step though. Yeah. yeah. Just doing it's it. Most, some people are like, whatever, I'm on vacation. Yeah. I don't even yeah. think about it. I went on vacation to London, in Mexico uh, for a wedding a few back in July and I was like, I, I'd been working out a lot and so I was like, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I don't wanna break my streak. And so I went 
And then I, I was so discouraged by like the, the resort's shitty little gym. I went once and I was like, I'd rather be on the beach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd rather yeah. get drunk. Yeah. Plus, sometimes like jet lag or whatever. I don't know about you, but I get tired when I travel, especially long yeah, distances. Yeah, me too. Something about it just wipes you out. It's all the people standing in front of you and all the like shitty thoughts you have to have about your fellow humans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's just whatever makes you feel better. Like there's some people who when they go on vacation, like it, that's their excuse. Like mm -hmm. they're like, I don't know, go work out. I'm just gonna yeah. relax. But other people who get antsy if they don't work out or like need that outlet. A good vacation for me is one that allows me to exercise. Yeah. Like I, I definitely want to hang out on the beach, but if I can hang out on the beach from like like nine to noon and then everyone's tired because they're burnt out from the sun and then I go work out for like, like 45 minutes to an hour and then shower and then we go out to lunch somewhere and then I, then it's the best vacation. Is there always your, is it always like a lunchtime thing or do you, do no. you tend it, to go? I mean, whenever usually, but that seems to be the most convenient in like my That's life. when I go to the gym usually, if I do going during the week. Mm -hmm. um, I see a trainer about once a week, maybe sometimes twice a week if I could swing it, but it's always lunchtime. Yeah. Because like it's a good time where you could get away, you have an hour, you just do it, yeah. and nothing is wasted. Yeah. And then you can just eat at your desk if and, you need to. But. And the, the, back to the human relationship thing, I genuinely enjoy my time with Elise. And so she will be like, you can just go after work. And I'm like, but I kind of like watching Cheers with you. <laughs> yeah. like, and I kind of want to be able to do that. So, you know, I don't want to go after work. If we're at lunch, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah. it's not a big deal. Not a waste. <laughs> Let's just yeah. see. Watching Cheers, how romantic. <laughs> We're all it like, is. phones, technology, Kindle. He's like, Here's this out. like in-depth <laughs> discussion. Yeah, which totally makes sense. Yeah. What's your like ideal vacation? What would a day on ideal vacation look like? Uh, it would be getting up early. Thank you, um, it'd probably be in some place like Hawaii because mm. I like tropical locations. I like. You I guys love, love beaches. Beach, yeah. I love the ocean. Um, it would, but it would be getting up early, um, going out to the beach. Um, maybe ch recovering from the beach to the pool. Uh huh. Uh huh. And then exercise, food, and then maybe some sort of other out on the island or whatever activity. Like a snorkeling thing. S exactly. Or yeah. Or sailboating. surf lessons or sailboating or something. And then early dinner, and then not necessarily going out. I'm not really going out. Person, if it's a group, then yeah, let's p plan for something, but then otherwise go back to the hotel room or whatever, and then chill out, find some sort of garbage movie that's on one of the hotel channels, yep. like and fall yeah, and then fall asleep at like 8 p.m., That's and then do it again. my ideal vacation. We should go on well. vacation again. I know. <laughs> Trevor actually trying to plan something for November, oh, really? yeah. We want to nice. go to like some all-inclusive resort type thing, yep. and, and essentially do that. Same. Yeah. Beach, scuba diving, or snorkeling, or whatever, mm -hmm. maybe some drinking, yeah. and like, Asleep and just chill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. just chill. It's the best. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we have one more segment before we close out. We're gonna try our beer me out. Do we have a, a beer that we could bring? <laughs> I just saw Texas literally get up and sprint. I heard. <laughs> <laughs> if we don't have it ready, it's okay. I could kind of getting, maybe we'll vamp. I'll vamp a little. Getting out of the fridge. Yeah. You know, we'll, give, nice we'll give we'll give some out. context to this thing. Yes. He's coming over. Um, I came up with this segment like months ago because we were sitting in the producer's office and I was just like, this title came to me. I was like. It's either beer me out or like beer with me. I don't know what it is. So yes. Todd, Eric, and I started throwing ideas around. Thank you, sir. And this is what was born. Yeah, so what it Get is, is we choose one person to do this. Maybe we could do more, see how it plays out. You guys could always give feedback on Twitter or in the comments. And what we do is we get one guest to pick a topic that they're really passionate about. Mm -hmm. I believe yours is. Well, oh. I, I pitched a topic and you told me it had been done before. But well, that's, no, it, that's it had, so this is the first time we're doing it on the show. We tested this out. We have an Instagram now, at uh, mm -hmm. Always Open Show, if you want to check that out. And we did it with Eric, who's one of the producers on the show. Yeah. Bar door. And he had a beer, and he talked about pro wrestling, because mm -hmm. that is something he is passionate yes. about. Yes. And so when we asked you today, what is the topic that you want to talk about? I said pro wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm willing to, I, there are other things that I'm passionate about. I am willing to. I've, gained an, I've been talking a lot about pro wrestling recently, so I would like to hear um, I would like to hear your your. Okay. Your I want to hear your. Do you want me to throw I mean, out my other pitch, and you guys can just you guys can pick I mean, which one you want me to? Oh, we can get to the other beer. You want me to do two? <laughs> yeah, you can do two. Look, because I mean, I I've been watching Glow, and I'm developing an appreciation for wrestling as a result. Yeah, Look, yeah. dope show. If you're Glow's not watching great. Glow, I, I don't love, know what right. you're doing. I love Glow. I've oh my tried. god. Maybe Glow. I'll give it a second try. Oh, season two is better what? than season. It really picks up. Season two, yeah. Season one is a great base, and then season two, like. 
every single one of the characters has like their time so to really grow and develop and they're just Every single one of them is incredible, and Maybe I'll I highly it. recommend it. Yeah. Honestly, the, like first, the first couple of episodes, episodes are a little slow. Yeah, it gets better like episode four, five, six. Okay. Um, what I mean, just out of curiosity, what are the other topics? I was gonna say Power Rangers. Oh, that's good too. <laughs> that's good one. Good too. Or professional wrestling. Okay, what if you do? Um, what if you do thirty seconds of each? <laughs> no, you gotta do. You gotta I gotta do, do, do the sixty. Right. You gotta do one. Um, Let's hear pro wrestling. Okay. Yeah, we're going Because we, we heard about it from one person, and now we're going to hear about it from you. Okay. So what James has to do, he has a, a pint of beer, and he has to finish this beer and talk about why pro wrestling is amazing and why we should watch it or follow it or whatever, uh, all in one minute. So he has to do both. Or he could talk, right, what if he's going to do a twist and he's going to talk about how much he hates it? Or that. It's good. Or whatever that. you're passionate about. Yeah. He's got to convince turn. us. <laughs> but uh, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> I don't know if we have, do we have a one minute timer ready? We do. we do. All right. All right. Whenever you are ready. Is there a strategy to drinking whatever, and talking? Whatever. Some people uh, open your throat. I don't know. You can no, slam we're talking it all about down. Drinking. Yeah. <laughs> you could slam okay. it all down. You could drink it a little bit at a time. Or, or you go. could explain and then chug. Okay. Whatever you want to. All right. Ready and go. Pro wrestling. <laughs> people don't give pro wrestling nearly enough credit. It is the. I literally saw a thread the other day. Someone called it fake. It's not fake. Okay. It's pre-planned. You wouldn't call a movie fake. Mm. It's not intended to convince you that it's real. <laughs> oh, good strategy. It is the one medium that allows you to get all of the uh, excitement of a sport match, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Where there's ups and downs, highs and lows, close calls and back and forth. But it's planned. It's the only thing where that's controlled. Halfway through. The only thing about it is that you have to have the athleticism of one of the best athletes on the planet to do it. Very true. There's just no one there to help you. <laughs> other than the other person in the ring. And both of you are working together. If you've ever tried it, it's insane to try and think about how you can concentrate on second. your match. <clears throat> and, also, <laughs> and also create the best story possible. Five seconds. Oh. You can do this. I believe. You did that it! Good. Very good. Very good. Um, That's a good beer. What is this? Austin. Right, it's good. Austin, Austin, Austin Amber. Amber. You oh. tasted it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, it's funny Minimal that you bring perfect. that up. I've been, I've been, uh, I was listening to an episode of, of My Favorite Murder the other day, and one of the stories that they told was about this Mexican pro wrestler, female, in Mexico City, who turned out to be a serial killer. They don't know how many people she killed. They estimate anywhere between, like, 24 and 48 Whoa! women. Whoa! She would go and shit. kill old women. Why um, old women? She had something, basically, like, gr at growing up, she had um, her, yeah, she had hardcore mommy issues. Like, her mom... When she was like 12 or 13, her mom um, traded her for three beers. Her mom was an alcoholic. Her mom traded her for three beers, so she like... Like three, not like wow. three cases. No, like, no, three, like three of those. Uh, and so she... Wow, like, James. Yeah. This was good, though. <laughs> I mean, it, I made made it in her <laughs> <laughs> uh, So anyway, so then she like, she wanted, <laughs> she always wanted to become a wrestler, so she became a wrestler, and she was known as like the Lady of Silence, and she had this like pink leotard with like this like butterfly mask. Oh, and then it turns out she killed like 40 people. Holy shit. Um, but I was talking to um, Emily in programming, who's a big pro wrestling fan, and we, she told me about, um, cause I grew up with two older brothers who loved wrestling and I would watch it because of them, but never, so I like know of like older wrestlers. I don't know of anyone currently, but uh, she told me about like blading mm -hmm. was a thing. Yeah. Which was insane to me. Is that me. different than microblading, like the thing they do on your eyebrows? It is, I so guess, apparently yes. blading is this thing where, um, Wrestlers would would hide. They would hide blades <gasps> in their in their like. They would hide they'd blades. Like tape their wrists. Yeah, and go yeah. into the ring with blades, and then they'd like cut their foreheads to make themselves look like they're bleeding like crazy, in the ring. So it looks like they're like just like. Like actually got hurt. Yeah, which was insane oh, to me shit. because I was one of those people who always grew up like, oh, this is so fake. Right. And after she told me that, I was like, holy shit! Like I remember watching like different wrestlers with and you know wrestling matches with my brothers and seeing so much blood and being like that's so fake and now realizing like holy shit i mean yeah it was planned but it was fucking but they, made them well, but they were cutting but their faces yeah the, the thing about that too is you have to consider that someone decided that it was worth doing that because it would better sell yeah the excitement yeah. like because generally you take like a big hit or you take a chair shot or something like that and then undercover like a magician basically you'd blade yourself and it's like oh my god yeah like it's supposed to create this climactic moment right 
but someone genuinely did genuinely do that cut to them. A slit. They cut a slit <laughs> yeah. in their right. and there's dudes that like wrestle that have just scars. Yeah, she told me uh, someone oh broke God. something Brody, I can't remember his name. Bruiser Brody. Bruiser that's Brody. Because yeah. I asked her, I was like, why does he have these crazy like marks on his forehead? She was like, oh, he would, he would yeah. play. He would play There's a guy, New Jack, who is, yeah. Do you know New Jack? Yeah. He's basically he's basically a crazy person who found the exact right medium to do it, yeah. but like his forehead is just all scarred up. Jacked up. Well, uh, you New and Jack. you and Lawrence Jack. actually did a doc. You did for mm -hmm. Rooster Teeth. It yeah. was about right. wrestling. Yeah. Like you guys actually went. You did like wrestling classes. You learned the moves. You participated in a match. That's huge. I'm doing it. Still. Really? Still? You're you're gonna yeah. wrestle? That's incredible. I'm still Where doing are your it. blades hiding? <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably not gonna blade myself. <laughs> But I, I'm still, I still train. That's awesome. Yeah, and it's it's a lot of fun. And the funny thing is, like the classes that I go to, there's a lot of conditioning. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of learning wrestling moves, and mostly just like footwork in the ring, learning how to trust the other person that you're with and how to get them to trust you. But then every single class has like a solid 35 minutes where the instructor just goes like, "Let's talk philosophy. Like, what makes a good match?" How, how how does entertainment work? It's basically like oh, wow. it's the same as if you went into the room and sat down with like a screenwriter. Yeah. Like what makes a good movie? It's the exact I same conversation. Learning about the craft in that sense also helps. It's awesome. Glow and we were talking about. I was gonna about, say like how accurate does that glow make Glow is fantastic and yeah. it's probably the first like live action narrative thing that I've ever seen that treats wrestling with the respect that it probably deserves. Mm -hmm. Like the way Alison Bree's character is like enamored really by it, it and like appreciates it and respects it and understands it is like very true and very honest. Yeah. Um, I also, yeah, I really like how each of the characters sort of like grows from being, because a lot of them, like the, the whole premise of it is they sort of go to a casting call and they're like, we're casting wrestlers. And mm -hmm. it's like, are we actors or are we wrestlers? And he's like, yes. Exactly. <laughs> also amazing role for Mark Maron. But yeah, yeah, uh, awesome yeah like she like role. goes from being like, I'm a, you know, an, an actress to like being really good. And then Alison Brie uh, ends up going into like the heel role, mm -hmm. which is also really pivotal for wrestling because yeah. someone has to gotta have be villains. able to be like the antagonist. The heel is yeah. generally the better wrestler. Oh. We don't have to get into it, but generally the heel is the one, he he has to carry the match. Next time we bring he you or out, she. we'll give you another beer and you'll Please, <laughs> please, let me talk Heel. more about it, please. But we, we gotta wrap things up, unfortunately. James, Ashley, Merle. Thanks Barbara? for joining me today on our season finale. Right, so happy thanks. we finally got you. Thank you for having me. Hopefully I'm very, we'll get I'm you, very happy to be here. Uh, again before another five seasons hits. Yeah. <laughs> great. You know. And uh, thank you so much for watching the season of Always Open. We'll be back, I think, early, mid November ish. Yep. We're in November. Um, but hopefully you could catch up on any episodes you missed this season and watch the post shows. We'll, if be, you're a first we'll be posting stuff on Instagram. Yep. Keep up with us there. Always Open show. We'll put a little thing right here, Peyton. Right here. <laughs> Do it. I'll see it. Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah. right there. Uh, <laughs> oh! And, yeah, so tune in for a post show if you're a first member. If not, we'll see you next season. Bye -bye. Cheers, guys. Cheers Thanks for coming. I don't have anything left. <laughs> I got a little watery, but I think I got some.